The Rock, John Cena, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, Brock Lesnar, Logan Paul, and everyone else on the current roster is going to be available for WrestleMania 39. Triple H has the potential to legitimately create the best WrestleMania of all time. In today's video, I'll show you what matches need to happen and what storylines I booked to make this the best card ever. But before we get into the perfect WrestleMania card, let's talk about the perfect game you need to download today, which is the sponsor of the video, Raid Shadow Legends. You've got a phone, right? Then you should be playing Raid Shadow Legends today, otherwise you're just missing out. Raid is completely free to play, and the newest champion for the game is our SmackDown Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey. That's right, it's Ronda Rousey's very own Raid Champion. She's so cool, she's got this tough arena fighter look with her clan's sash around her, and of course, the Fist of Fire. Not only does Ronda look strong, but she's a real threat on the battlefield as well. She's got a bunch of multi-hit skills, making her perfect for taking on bosses like the Fire Knight and she hits like a steam train too. Better yet, her second skill blocks both active and passive skills, making her perfect for shutting down those super tough arena teams. If that's not enough, her third skill is not only a powerful AOE attack, but it actually makes her immune to all turn meter reductions when it's not on cooldown. How great is that? And even after you've used it, it still reduces all turn meter reductions effects by half when it's on cooldown. So Rana can keep on trucking. Whether it's PvP battles or taking on tricky bosses, Rhonda will find a place on any team. You can get Rhonda for free right now. Whether you're a new or longtime player, just by logging into Raid. All you've got to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and February 20th. And Rhonda is yours. That's all there is to it. To celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, you also use the special promo code RAIDRONDA, available for all users, to get a bunch of helpful stuff like a 3-day 100% XP boost, 500k silver, and 5 full energy refills, perfect for leveling your Ronda up so she's at the top of her game. Just enter the promo code RAIDRONDA in-game and all these goodies can be yours. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get your exclusive rewards in Raid right now. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Vergus, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, and 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, available for 30 days for new players only. Get in on the action and join Raid Shadow Legends today. Let's get back to the video with the first night. I've split up this match card into two different nights. Let's jump into Saturday night. And to kick things off, we have a classic ladder match for the United States Championship. Austin Theory will be defending his title against AJ Styles, Ricochet, Mustafa Ali, Johnny Gargano, and Tommaso Ciampa. There are rumors of Triple H wanting to bring back the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania, but I personally like having that as a show, and I think it should stay. Including a ladder match for one of the mid-card titles could be a fun match to feature at WrestleMania. These high flyers would give us one hell of a ladder match. I wouldn't be upset with any of these guys winning this match either. A recent report came out saying that Sasha Banks is going to make an appearance in some capacity at New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom in January. While we aren't too sure what her role might be, there's doubt that she's going to ever come back to WWE, and I'm here to say that I think she is definitely going to come back, and I think she's going to wrestle at WrestleMania. Since she's been gone for so long, it just doesn't make sense to insert her into the Raw or SmackDown women's title division immediately. It's just no. I have other plans for those belts anyway. The best idea is for Sasha Banks and Naomi to return to the tag team division and win back the belts that they never lost. Then the two ladies can increase the prestige and value of those titles and that entire division as a whole. I completely believe that they can bring back relevance to that division. That is how much I trust Sasha Banks. The WWE needs her back and the same can be said about Naomi. Drew McIntyre and Edge are in a weird situation right now because with all the rumors and the ongoing storylines, they both don't have too much going on to build up a major battle at WrestleMania. 
Because of that, it's probably a good idea to put them in the ring together for a dream match. The issue is that they're both baby faces. A few typically works best when there's a clear baby face and a clear heel in the storyline. However, if there's any two people that could make this work, it is Edge and Drew McIntyre. Both men are so talented and can pretty much make anything work out. The story could be as simple as Drew McIntyre unexpectedly challenging Edge to a match for the sole purpose of proving that he's the better man. If not that, Edge could just come out and say that he's disappointed in Drew McIntyre because he has all the potential in the world, but he's had such a shitty year and he wants to bring out the best in Drew McIntyre. That one of those two storylines, I would be completely fine with it. Sometimes it really is that simple. If worse comes to worse, then Edge should turn heel because he's the better villain between the two. And if none of that happens either, then a heel turn could be good for Drew McIntyre because he needs a shakeup in his character. Because like I said, he hasn't been doing too much in the last few years. After a year of many failures, you could see him just lash out on the legend. Regardless of how we get here, it doesn't matter. It just needs to happen. LA Knight has been making quite the name for himself in his feud with Bray Wyatt on SmackDown. I've always been a fan of him since his NWA days when he was Eli Drake. We've got to thank Triple H for getting rid of that Max Dupree nonsense and bringing back LA Knight. With that being said, the perfect opponent for him would be Pat McAfee. With college football ending soon, we should expect to see McAfee back in the WWE. He's been having matches at big shows like WrestleMania and SummerSlam, and the dude just gets wrestling. He understands how to cut a promo and make people care about his matches and storylines. And he can back it up in the ring. I think the promo battles between him and LA Knight could be a lot of fun, and it's something we need to witness. Therefore, I would book this match. It would be a fun short match that could be a good win for LA Knight. Pat McAfee definitely doesn't need this win. Many people want to see John Cena wrestle Austin Theory for the United States Championship, and I love the idea of that match, but I think that WWE can push that off for later, maybe at SummerSlam of 2023. The other idea I've been seeing people throwing around is having Edge and John Cena wrestle one more time, and I'm not too crazy about that idea though. I've seen these two wrestle countless times in the past when I was younger, and I don't need to see it again. I don't even want to. They've had some bangers, and I feel like they won't live up to the standard that they set in 2006. With that being said, if you want to make WrestleMania 39 the biggest show ever, you've got to book Logan Paul versus John Cena. That is the perfect match that will draw in so many viewers. John Cena is a box office superstar and Logan Paul is an internet star and he's shown that he's taking the WWE to new heights and he's also taking it very seriously. The match against Roman Reigns was all the proof we needed. The WWE should pull the trigger on this match. I've specifically put it on the first night because I think Logan Paul will have some clip that goes viral and not get a lot of people tuning into the second night. I even think that Logan Paul should defeat John Cena. A massive victory like this could put him in that main event scene. It could really make him a star in the business. Logan Paul wants the match too, as he said on his podcast. I'm sorry, Austin Theory, but this is the match I would go for the big events. We wanted to see Becky versus Ronda in 2019, but unfortunately that did not happen because the WWE had other plans and they wanted to include Charlotte Flair in that first ever WrestleMania main event because of her last name probably. It's 2022 and there's no better time to do Becky versus Ronda in that singles match we always wanted to see. Ronda Rousey has become quite the heel, while Becky Lynch remains as one of the biggest baby faces in the company right now. I would book Becky Lynch to actually win the Royal Rumble and shock everyone announcing that she isn't going to challenge Bianca Belair and Raw. No, she's moving over to SmackDown and she's going to take care of some business that should have been taken care of a few years ago. And Becky Lynch defeats her to win the SmackDown Women's Championship. The main event for the first night of WrestleMania should be the tag team title match. And that match is Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens challenging the Usos for the undisputed tag team belts. Since this is the strongest storyline right now in the WWE, it's only fitting that they're given the main event of the first night. Sami Zayn has been one of the most consistent and entertaining things about wrestling in the last year. The first night has to end with him and Kevin Owens dethroning the longest reigning tag team champions in the WWE. It would be the ultimate feel good moments. The moment that WWE has been building up for months now. Sami Zayn really truly deserves this. And that would be the ending of the historic 
historic first night of WrestleMania 39. Let's get right into the second night. To start the second night, Cody Rhodes should wrestle Seth Rollins in their fourth and final match ever. I know some people are going to be upset with this decision, but it's the only right call. The match should have been for the WWE Championship, but the company has missed the boat with that one. It's too late for Roman to somehow drop one of the belts. And we all know what the main event of the second night is going to be. With that being said, I think this is the right move. It makes a lot of sense because Seth Rollins literally beat this man to a pulp the night after their Hell in a Cell match just before he left for surgery. Cody Rhodes cannot come back and ignore that assault. He's got to come back and teach this man a lesson. However, we do have a slight issue and that is that Seth Rollins has turned babyface. I'm not sure how they're going to work around that, but it's got to be done. Cody Rhodes needs to win one last time and move on from Seth Rollins. Rollins. Triple H posted a picture with Bad Bunny a few days ago, and I think we all know what that means. He's coming back to have another match for WrestleMania 39 in Hollywood. The best match for him would be teaming up with Rey Mysterio to take on Dominic Mysterio and Damian Priest. Bad Bunny and Rey Mysterio is the craziest dream team ever, and it's something that I never knew I wanted to see until I, I thought about it for one second. This also pushes that singles match between Rey and Dominic for down the line. As for the winner of this match, I think that Bad Bunny and Rey should win it because, you know, it's Bad Bunny, the man's gotta win the match. But it wouldn't be a bad decision if Dominic and Damian Priest won either. This is just a fun WrestleMania match to have. Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley have had two matches in 2022. The first time was at the Royal Rumble for the WWE Championship where Bobby Lashley won with the help of Roman Reigns. After that, they battled it out once again at Crown Jewel where Brock Lesnar stole a victory while still being in the Hurt Lock. Bobby then turned heel and beat him up after the match due to some frustrations. With all that being said, they need to settle their business and have one more match, and it should be a stipulation match, and the perfect stipulation is a classic no-holds-barred match. This should simply be a brutal fight with a good amount of weapons being used. It should just be chaos. In the end, Brock Lesnar should be victorious. Bianca Belair is going to most likely walk into WrestleMania 39 as the Raw Women's Champion as she should. That is going to mean that she's held onto that title for a year by then. Only one woman can return to defeat her, and that lady is none other than Charlotte Flair. Bianca Belair has been very vocal about wanting to wrestle her because she's defeated every other member of the Four Horse Women. She's defeated Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, and Bayley, the last person that needs to be beaten to solidify herself as the best of the WWE is Charlotte Flair, and that match would slap, I would love to see it happen, and that's why it's gotta be booked for WrestleMania 39. Sheamus and Gunther put on a five-star classic match at Clash at the Castle for the IC Championship. The crowd wanted to badly see Sheamus become the new champion, but unfortunately, he came up short and was unsuccessful. Since the match was so good, I would not be opposed to running it back one more time, but this time with Sheamus winning the belts. It would be a feel-good moment that would definitely be a treat for the hardcore wrestling fans watching WrestleMania, and honestly, I even think the general audience would love to see this kind of battle, because these guys are crazy and they actually beat the crap out of each other. The next match on the card is the return of the Demon taking on the return for one night only, The Fiend. This is my inner Mark speaking, but I feel like we were robbed of this match and I couldn't really think of anything else for these two to do, so I thought why not pair them up together for a match that we wanted to see since SummerSlam of 2019. There's really not much to say about this one. The second to last match on the card should be Bayley taking on Rhea Ripley in a singles match. I actually have no reasoning for this match whatsoever, other than the simple fact of wanting both of these women on the card. This is just me doing some lazy booking. Not everyone can be perfect with their show. And the main event of the second night has got to be The Rock taking on Roman Reigns with the undisputed championship on the line. A lot of people are talking about Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn or Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, but we've got to be completely realistic and understand that there is no bigger match to have other than The Rock versus Roman Reigns. That is the main event. This should be the main focus of WrestleMania 39. Cody Rhodes should not wrestle him in the first night for one title. That would take away from Cody's moment. It would just be too much. Like who 
would you focus on what storylines? It's just, I don't like it. No, Roman Reigns should beat The Rock, retire him, and then drop his belt to Cody Rhodes at SummerSlam. And that is how I would book WrestleMania 39, as well as the end of Roman Reigns' title reign. Anyways, that is it for the video, guys. Let me know what you think about my card in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next video.